you don't have to give your name and all, but your background, what is your background so people know where you're coming from? Hi, Jibriel Marsley. And my, Jibriel, slowly. Uh, Marsley. All right. What? So Moroccan, your dad's side, but what about your mom? Hispanic Catholic. Okay. You told me Mexican, right? Yes. But now your dad was Sunni, but he's is no longer Sunni, you said? Correct. Yeah, he is uh, apostate. Okay. And so you, instead of becoming Sunni, you ended up saying you became Shia, right? Correct. How many years have you been a Shia now? Um, off and on since 2008. Okay. In the comments, you told me the Council of Nicaea. So I want to test your knowledge, see how much you know about Nicaea. You said, is this the first major council after 300 years? Is that was your question, right? Right, uh, because in the video, uh, it had mentioned the um, yeah, al Kafi being 300 years after. Yeah. And what does the Council of Nicaea have to do with written sources? If it was about the dates, actually, before this call, I was uh, listening to that video further because yeah. uh, it was the first time I'd watched that. But uh, if if the if the problem was that it's kind of like the the textual critics who say who try to say that like for instance the New Testament has been written uh, hundreds of years after. No, the actually, they don't say that. You're mis uh, misquoting again. So let me repeat the question, which you didn't answer. What does it have to do? What does the Council of Nicaea have to do with written sources? Because if I was going to press you on it, Kafi, you claim he comes 300 years later, but now let's play your game of textual criticism. What's the oldest copy that you have of Kafi's original work? What's the date? Oh, uh, let me also preface by saying i know you you guys probably know way more than me um i'm actually still an yeah a you're a student that's what every muslim says when he gets cornered so i'm not a scholar i'm a student but you then feel the need to chime in let me repeat the question which you didn't answer again let's make this fruitful don't let don't tap dance for your argument to be relevant with what textual critics say about the copies of the originals not when the originals were written you're misquoting bart ehrman and others i know what you're doing i didn't ask you about the oldest extent copy of Kafi. I said, when did Kafi write? According to the Shia, it was 300 years later. So now I'm going to play the game of textual criticism. You don't have the original writing of Kafi. So what's the oldest extent copy of Kafi? That's relevant to the argument of textual criticism, which you were mentioning. Do you know the date? I don't. I'm, I, I normally go to uh, al dash Islam.org, which is the, the yes, main... The, the same so, site that I go to to talk about Muta and how they justify Muta. But let's let's pause here. So let me correct you not to make this mistake again because you say you believe in God and you're going to answer to God for everything you say. Do not confuse a council with a writing that I was asking about and do not confuse the original date of the writing from the copies that survived. That's what you did. You just made three mistakes in that sentence. So now, yeah. besides that, that's all you mentioned the Council of Nicaea for? Yeah, um, I only wasn't like five minutes into that video when oh. that was brought up. So you didn't hear the entire video, so you got excited yet to chime in. That's okay. I'm fine with it. But so did you understand this is what we call a false analogy? Council of Nicaea in 325 is not the same of me asking you, what's the oldest Shia source that you have explaining the Quran. And when you tell me Kafi and I ask you when, and then they say 300 years later, that is not at all equivalent to a council because there are written sources before the council convened, such as Ignatius. Do you know Ignatius? Um, of, of Antioch? Yes. Do you know him? His writings? Yeah. Martyr. No, not his writings. Just his story. Yeah, the story. Okay, that's fine. Do you know Polycarp, Irenaeus? So this is what's relevant to the Kafi issue. So according to the Shia, Kafi wrote 300 years later, right? Mm -hmm. So now when you then bring up what textual critics say about the copies of the books of the New Testament, there is not a scholar, and I'm going to challenge you to quote one, a bona fide scholar who's not a Christian. I'll, I'll even give you Bart Ehrman. Bart Ehrman is an atheist agnostic. He doesn't care for Christianity. Mm -hmm. He will tell you that the books of the New Testament are first century writings however 
The copies of those books are later. Like in the case of Mark, he would say the oldest extent copy of Mark would be 150 years later. There's a difference between a copy of the writing and when the writing was originally written. I didn't ask you how old are the copies of Kafi's original. I asked when Kafi wrote. That's it. Okay, so how is that relevant to the writings of the New Testament, which even Bart Ehrman admits are first century? Well, I mean, with everything you said, I guess that that uh, shows that it wasn't relevant. Okay. You know, that's cleared up. Okay, so now let's let's uh, let's big piggy piggyback off of that. All the knowledge you have about the Quran doesn't come from the Quran, but it comes from sources. That was my point. Whereas as Christians, when I want to know about Christianity, I can go to the books of the New Testament because even a skeptical scholar, don't take my word for it, go Google for Ehrman, will tell you. He doesn't believe Matthew wrote Matthew. Luke wrote Luke, but he'll tell you these are first century accounts. Paul's letters, they're first century. He'll tell mm -hmm. you that First Thessalonians was the first of the New Testament books written, and he dates it at 50 AD. So when I want to know about the church, I got writings from the first century. Do you have any writings from the time of Muhammad that will give you the historical background of the composition of the Quran? Uh, with what I know, I have to say no. But actually, this is one thing I wanted to ask you about. Uh, when, when it comes to the transmission uh, of these things, um, I was under the impression that <clears throat> Christianity had the same thing, like, for instance, where St. Paul says uh, some more of that, uh, believe, uh, uh, believe the tradition we've handed to you, whether by uh, word of mouth or by letter. And where did you get so, that from? The um, One of the epistles of Paul. And that's says, written in the first century, right? So you just made my case again. You quoted a first century document. I know what you're quoting. Second Thessalonians 2.15, written by the person within less than 20 years of Jesus's earthly ministry. This is not the same as you quoting a document 300 years later that's telling me what Muhammad said 300 years earlier. So you're comparing apples and pineapples again. You know that, right? right. So I'm going to ask you the question. What you quoted was 2 Thessalonians 2.15. Something written by Paul in the first century, less than 20 years of Jesus's earthly ministry. Now, as a Shia, you believe Jesus was taken to heaven. We'll get to that. What I'm asking you is, show me something from the time of Muhammad that says something like that. What you have received from us by word of mouth or epistle, pass on. What are your sources from the time of Muhammad that you know written at the time of Muhammad? You may not have the original. You may have copies that accurately produce those. But what source do you have from Muhammad to give you the historical background of the Quran? Now, this is where my knowledge. Now, I'm not. I'm not making this up. Uh, this is where my knowledge fails. I mean, I know that in the in the Kaaba there are relics from Muhammad. In there. How do you know? Have you been to the Kaaba? Have you then investigated those relics and had archaeologists take them? That also, I'm not aware of if they've taken videos of this. I know they've taken videos of like the Holy Sepulchre for for proofs of, okay. of uh, everything uh, is Jesus. based on hearsay. You know that, right? They have relics from time Muhammad. How do you know that? Did you go there, and did you have archaeologists who are not Muslims who rigorously examine these relics and say, "Yeah, this is from the time Muhammad"? If so, give me the documentation. Mm. Yeah, I don't got that on hand. So here you went. You converted to religion based on 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th century sources, not eyewitness material, and you're banking your eternity on this. Here, here's a talking point. Okay, so right. um, I, yeah, I call this an inquirer because- Okay, that's fine. What I've been, I'm, at, so I'm I've asking been, questions, yeah. Hmm. Go ahead. What I'm looking for is um, a way of life that, that brings, the entire the mind to 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 a goal of holiness uh consistently you don't want to say that yeah. you you don't want to open up that can of worms islam is huh? anything but holy especially shia islam i don't think you want to go there wait, wait especially shia i would yeah. think that i mean well all right this is another talking point so i am aware from this uh, this much of history that the the sunnis under the caliphs muawiyah and yazid and all them have treated the the Christians is bad. The Shia is just as badly if they treated the Christians yeah. and the Sufis too. Yeah, they well, killed the yeah, Sufis. I, well, to me, the Sunni Shia, they're all corrupt. That wasn't my point. You're saying that you're looking for a way of life that promotes holiness. 
you know, as a Shia, you, you, you don't need to open this can of worms because one of the arguments by the Sunnis against you, against you, not me, it's not a Christian Shia argument, it's a Sunni Shia argument, is the issue of muta. Do you remember earlier I called you muta boy? I was going to bring that up. Yes, yes. So, okay. uh, yeah, this is the biggest. In fact, probably oh, there's more. One. There's more issues with Muhammad, but I just want to know, for the life of me, please justify. You heard in the discussion. And don't try to tell me muta is not, for respect, I'll say temporary marriage. For the life of me, as you're going to answer before God, you're telling me as a Shia, and if you lived in a Shia land and you had a sister, you would be okay with a Shia saying, I'm going to marry your sister for three days. and When we're divorced, I'm going to give her a sum of money. Please tell me, for the love of God that you're going to answer to on the Day of Judgment, you're okay with that. Uh, uh, as far as I'm understanding, this is, it's not a, there's no agreement on it. The ulama, some of them are for it and some are against it. And many Shias. No, not the uh, Shia. From... No. In the Shia Islam, muta is standard practice. Go to your website at islam.org. They even have an article justifying muta. But you didn't answer the question though, did you? Um, right, right. No, uh, yeah, no, that would not be okay. Say it again. That would that would not be okay. Okay, now I'm now respecting you a lot. See, when a person is honest, I'm very gentle. When they start tap dancing, that's when I don't have patience. Now, I'm not trying to disrespect your mother. I'm using an example. I'll use my mother. My mother, my father left my mother. She was all by herself. If a Shia came and said, I want to marry your mother for three days, and then I'm going to then terminate the marriage and give her money, I'm going to be in her. Would you be okay if you're living in a Shia land and your mother was a Shia and your dad had left her, that someone would do that with your mother? Be honest. No. And yet you're still a Shia. But again, like this, it seems like something that's debated. I mean, I've read, uh, I've heard of the book called uh, the, the Laws of Desire, I think it's called. I forget the author, but she was a female Iranian. Yeah, a female, of course, who's a liberal. Give me your official Orthodox Shia believing scholars, Kafi, Kuleni, you name it, and go to islislam.org. You're going to see, they say, no, it is halal. It's acceptable because the Sunnis attack you for saying, that it's not abrogated. The Shia said, no, it's not abrogated. It is still halal and acceptable. Here you went an appeal to some Iranian woman who's obviously troubled by this practice and wants to explain it away. That's not how you do your religion because you're a Shia. That means you believe in traditional Islam, not modernized Islam that's embarrassed by their history and their sources. Mm. Um, so so, okay. do you have your crown with you, by the way? Yes, yes, sir. Can you open up chapter sixty-five, verse four, and read that for me? Which, uh, which surah? It's uh, Surah Al-Tahrim, sixty-five. We'll just uh, chapter sixty-five and read. Read verses one to four. So, O Prophet, when you divorce your wives, divorce them for the waiting period and count well the waiting. Period. Now you got to go slow so you can understand what you're reading. This is okay. talking about when you've divorced a woman. What's the waiting period? before she can remarry so oh prophet when you divorce your wives the waiting period go ahead now uh, and count well the waiting period and reverence your lord your rab expel them not from their houses nor shall they depart unless they commit a flagrant indecency these are the limits set by god Allah and whosoever transgresses the limits set by Allah has surely wronged himself. Thou knowest not. Perhaps God will bring something new to pass thereafter. It's Ayat 1. Yeah, keep reading all the way forward because I don't want you to read out of context. Say, well, that's not the context. So now read 2 to 3 and 4 slowly so okay. you can see the waiting period. All right. So when they have fulfilled their term, Take them back in an honorable way or separate from them in an honorable way. And call to just persons among yourselves to witness and uphold the testimony for Allah. By this is exhorted whosoever believes in Allah and the last day. And whosoever reverences God, he will appoint a way out for him. And will provide for him whence he reckons not. And whosoever trusts in Allah... He suffices him. Truly, God fulfills his command. 
God has indeed set a measure for all things. As for those of your women who no longer await okay, menstruation. Okay, now that's the key. Because there's a waiting period. It's called idda. Just to give you the background if you don't know. In Islam, when you divorce a woman, there's what's called the idda waiting period. It's three months. Now, it's, at, it's talking about different kinds of women. A woman who's at menopause. She doesn't have periods. How long should she wait? So now read verse 4. The different groups of women who are going to be married and divorced. Read 4 slowly and loudly. As for those of your women who no longer await menstruation, if you are unsure, then their waiting period is three months, as it is for those who are yet to menstruate. But Wait, as did you hear that? As those who have yet menstruated, right? You got to read it carefully, understand, saying, for those women who no longer menstruate, because it's three monthly cycles, but then you have women who are old or menopause. How long did they wait? Three months. And this is the same period for those who have yet to menstruate. Reread that, because I don't want you to escape it. Right. As for those <clears throat> of your women who <clears throat> no longer await menstruation, if you are unsure, then their waiting period is three months, as it is for those who are yet to menstruate. And yet but to at, menstruate, huh? You understand it's talking about women who don't menstruate because they're menopause, women who have yet to menstruate. Why haven't they menstruated yet? <clears throat> they haven't hit puberty. Say it again. So you got it. That's why you started choking. Say it again. They uh, have not yet hit puberty. Are you okay with a religion that sanctions men marrying premature minors, prepubescent minors who haven't menstruated, and a man then has sex with her, deflowers her, consummates the marriage sexually, and then if he divorces her, she waits three months for someone else to mount her. Now, be honest with me. You can answer to God, not to me or the Shia. If you had a, a nine-year-old daughter and a man comes in his 20s, says, I want to marry your daughter, would you give her off, let that man sleep with her, and when he's done with her because he's not pleased with her, divorce her? You okay with that? The divorce, no. Um, no, but, you're uh, not even divorced. Uh, Taking her and sleeping with her when she's nine. Okay, so, yeah, I would not, and I, people are, don't do that these days, but... Um, Who are you kidding? In Muslim countries, they're still doing it. Go to Afghanistan. Go to Saudi Arabia. Even in your Iran, your mullahs. Have you lived in Afghanistan and see what they do to young girls? But what about in medieval times of Christendom, didn't they also Excellent. take... No, America? even let's say you're right, that no, there wasn't. And in Christianity, the rule was she has to be post pubescent beyond puberty these are in the christian sources i'll give them to you like the didache but let's say you're right christians also were stupid enough to allow you to marry minors but i thought muhammad is a moral example for all times for all ages and he came to liberate women and exalt them and dignify them and improve their quality of life so why now does your prophet follow this example that does irreparable damage psychologically, physio physiologically to minors. Why didn't he abolish it like he did adoption? Um, but do we have documents though that it affected them negatively? I mean, you, I know. Well, well, hold on, wait, 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 wait. You're telling me. I mean, I can give you medical. Just Google it. Medical reports on what happens when you have sex with premature minors who are physiologically, psychologically not ready. It's documented, but let's put that aside. You, with the common sense that God has given you, being created in the image of God, though all it's tainted with sin, you're telling me a nine-year-old playing with dolls and swings, she is psychologically ready to have a grown man to penetrate her? But I don't think they were playing with dolls and on swings. According to the sources that you reject, Aisha was playing with dolls and on swings. Yeah, it's not okay. So um, why are you still a Muslim, man? It's in your book, 65 verse 4. 
Be honest with yourself. Why are you still a Muslim? It's in your book. You just read it. I didn't need to go to your hadith. I went to your book, 65 plus 4. Coming back to the issue of Christianity. So what did you want to ask me about the Protestant thing? So, um, uh, just for understanding yeah. what, I mean, because if we were to take Protestantism seriously, then it would be, I feel like that would be kind of equivalent to what? Um, uh, uh, legitimizing other... What? I mean, at first... Um, yeah, legitimizing like, what? Come on, say it. What would Protestantism or, legitimize? Like uh, like the Aryan sect, for instance. Like the, the what? Its I can't hear you. Oh. Um, <clears throat> they would legitimize what? What would Protestantism legitimize? If we were to deem Protestantism legitimate, then that would also legitimize what? Aryanism, which Islam came out of. Aryanism? Like the Jehovah's Witnesses of today. Islam, if you're saying Islam came out of Arianism, then you're admitting that Jesus is a pre-existent divine creature. So you're saying that's what Islam teaches? The sources that I read show that Muhammad was in communication with an Aryan bishop. Yeah, that monks. you got that from John of Dam Damascus, John Damascene in the 8th century. He was one of the church fathers who wrote on Islam, and he said... That Islam is an Aryan heresy, meaning that Muhammad was groomed by an Aryan who taught him that Jesus is a pre-existent divine creature. Because Arius, because you're talking about the Council of Nicaea, Arius did not believe Jesus was just a man. He actually taught that the Logos, the Word, was the first creature of God. And then through him, this Logos, everything else was created and the Logos became man. So you believe Islam teaches that? That's what Islam teaches? Oh, well, um, I was sort of digressing there. Um, but uh, but back to the original point of... Yes, because oh, you confused me. You said that if we legitimize sorry. Protestantism, then that means you know we could legitimize Arianism. No. In Protestantism, historic Protestantism, we're not talking about the offshoots, the heretical groups like you have Nation of Islam and so on. Historically, the reformers were all Trinitarians. That's something that's not debatable. Martin Luther, Trinitarian. John Calvin, Trinitarian. Mm -hmm. You're, they were all Trinitarians. 